The other night I was hosting a live and one of our channel subscribers asked a very important question and they said, what is it that I believe causes people going back to using drugs, sometimes in even greater quantities than prior to their sobriety? So someone struggling with alcohol, weed, nicotine, whatever it is, they quit for a long period of time and then they return to substance use in even greater quantities than they had before. And to answer this question, I have three parts, uh, a three-part answer, okay? And part one is, is a response to a comment that I saw recently on my Instagram post. And the person said, once an addict, always an addict. And this is so far from the truth. This is so 1,000% false. But I understand why the individual made this comment and why so many people think this way. Um, a lot of a person's return to substance use or drug use has to do with the way that society has treated drug use. Uh, if you've ever been in a 12-step program or a treatment center, there is a very high chance that you have been told that recovery is a lifelong thing, that you cannot become quote-unquote recovered, and that you are once an addict, you are always an addict. And it's exactly this type of rhetoric and this type of mentality that results not only in drug relapse, but drug relapse at greater quantities than prior use. And it's this type of rhetoric or this type of ideology that prevents people from even attempting moderate substance use if they so choose to return back to consuming whatever, weed, alcohol, whatever the drug may be. Um, so the first reason why people relapse and why they go back is because of this mindset. Once an addict, always an addict. I have a disease, I'm never going to be cured. This is how it's gonna be the rest of my life. Well, I can tell you with certainty, and struggling with my own substance use disorders to nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content. All things that my company now helps people quit. If you wanna learn more about that, check out the pinned comment or the video description for free and paid resources. Um, I, when I had that mentality of once an addict, always an addict, I always had an excuse to go back and consume more of the drug. Because I, as far as I was concerned, society was telling me that no matter how much hard work I put in, that no matter what I did, I was always gonna be this way. And, and, and why would I bother changing that? I might as well just stay addicted. If this is gonna be the rest of my life, this sucks. And if life is gonna suck, it might as well suck while using drugs. That, that's literally the mentality that a lot of people develop from that type of language. Once an addict, always an addict. Uh, the, the best thing I could do if that's you, I would highly recommend deprogramming and unsubscribing from that type of language. It's, it's, it's what society teaches us, it's what doctors teach us, it's what treatment centers teach us, and it's simply wrong. And even if it were true, why would I want to believe it to be so? What, what benefit would that give me? So that's the first thing. Deprogram, unsubscribe from that. It's, it's false. I'll prove it's false. Look, how many people do you know that have quit smoking cigarettes and 10 years later they say they can't even stand to be around it, by, they're disgusted by the smell of it? That person has no cravings, they have no interest in it, they're not experiencing withdrawal symptoms from it, they're not experiencing a nicotine dependence, right? They have zero, zero signs and symptoms of addiction and arguably one of the quote unquote strongest addictions out there, nicotine addiction, addiction to cigarettes, which kills over half a million people a year across the world. And there are people who are 100% recovered, have zero interest, and I bet you know someone in that category. I know people, typically not individuals who go through 12 step, typically it's people who find spontaneous recovery, they just stop on their own, who are disgusted by the sight of alcohol. They have no interest in drinking alcohol. And maybe prior to stopping, they could have easily been labeled an alcoholic or having an alcohol substance use disorder. I know people that have want, want nothing to do with it, even after years and years and years of drinking. I myself somewhat fall into that category, although I never would have been classified as addicted to alcohol. But I can certainly say that for weed, nicotine, energy drinks, stimulants, I have no interest, zero desire, no addiction, done. Next, point number two, reason number two why people uh, relapse. Uh, I believe it really has to do with a low stress tolerance, okay? People's ability to handle stress has just been absolutely demolished over time. And I, again, think this is largely a societal thing. And I think society has 
surmounted an unbelievable amount of stress on people these days, okay? I know I, I'm, I'm certainly subject to all this myself, okay? Um, but when's the last time that you really practiced stress management? When's the last time that you've really thought about techniques to help you better manage stress? I know for myself, looking back on my instances of lapse or relapse, a lot of it was stress-induced. When I talk to people and work with people, a lot, of, I don't know, 85% of the time it's stress-induced. And in many instances, the event that the person is referencing typically is not that big of a deal. I can't believe it. I was stuck in traffic for 45 minutes to an hour driving home. Okay. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I was preparing dinner for my family and I burned all the pizza and all the food got ruined and it cost, you know, 40 bucks, which is a lot of money. But like, okay, did anyone get hurt? No one got, no one got food poisoning and died? So... A lot of the stress, I can't handle what's going on at work. How have you tried to handle it? How have you tried to manage it? Are, are, are you working extra to try and keep up? Or are you just complaining about it? P people, people's stress tolerance is very, very low. And how did I learn to better manage stress? I started taking on more and more stressful things in my life, like at will, by choice. And, and maybe that started actually with my quitting substances, right? I chose to take on the stress, the physical and psychological stress of detox and quitting a drug. And I got good at that. And then I started to take on other stressful things in life. And I started to face other stressful tasks that had to be addressed. And the more stressful things that I faced, the higher and higher my stress tolerance improved, right? Building a business, getting married, having a child, doing this, going through illness, quitting drugs, blah, 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 trying to keep up with the, whatever. It, 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 you take on more stress in life and you're either gonna crumble or your tolerance for it's gonna go up. Now, at this exact moment as I'm filming the video, I'm chewing a piece of my own Kick It, Crave Less chewing gum. And I wanna take a moment and shout this out. If you're not familiar with it, it's a chewing gum that contains KSM 66 ashwagandha and NAC, N-acetylcysteine. This is a 90 count bottle, okay? Um, KSM 66 ashwagandha is an herb that is clinically shown in over 22 clinical trials to improve and increase a person's stress tolerance. KSM 66 physiologically impacts cortisol levels, which can have a direct impact on a person's tolerance for stress and stressful events. In my opinion, KSM 66 ashwagandha is like a miracle thing when it comes to addiction and addiction recovery and supplementation for stress, really for anyone who struggles with stress management, anxiety, stuff like that. Um, we, we are the only people in the world who have put it into a chewing gum for maximal fast, ap, fast acting absorption. I combine it with N-acetylcysteine to help reduce brain fog and to help with craving reduction. It's, a, it's, it's such an incredible product for quitting. So please check that out on YouTube shopping or you can find a link for it in the pinned comment. But stress tolerance, working on stress tolerance is another big one. Reason number three why people struggle to quit drugs and why I think people relapse on drugs more so is because it, it's very human to want to change the way that we feel, right? In the same sense that addiction is a very, very human condition, right? Everyone struggles with something. Everyone is addicted to something. It's just some people are addicted to bad things. Some people are help, are addicted to more productive, more beneficial things, right? So addiction, going back to my first point, addiction is a very human condition and we have to stop demonizing it otherwise. Now, fast forward to where I'm at on this point. Um, Everyone wants to change the way they feel, right? And drugs are a very rapid, fast-acting way of doing so. And on paper, to me, a substance consumption actually makes a lot of sense, right? Low barrier of entry, you can do it any time, it's fast-acting, and in many cases, it can be relatively inexpensive to do so in the moment, in the short term, right? So people want to change the way they feel. And, and my thing is this, if you're constantly wanting to change the way you feel, I, I think you're better off putting down the drugs, focusing on building a life that you enjoy, a life that you want to be living, in, instead of struggling to live the life that you currently have. 
and that, that's really my opinion on that matter. If you're constantly wanting to change your circumstances and you feel you're incapable, so you're using drugs to do so, I, I think we need to put a bigger focus on why you're stuck in the circumstances you're in and what degree of control you have and what ability you have to change those circumstances. Mm, I think that's a significantly more positive outlook than I just have to continually use drugs the rest of my life to change the way that I, to change the way that I feel. Those are the, the, the top reasons that people relapse. People relapse and people go back to drug use because they're making a conscious choice to change the way that they feel in the moment. And that choice could be rooted in the concept of once an addict, always an addict. It could be rooted in the idea that they can't handle the amount of stress that's been presented to them. Could, that choice to consume drugs again could be rooted in a lot of things. But that's really my complete answer as to why people return to substance use and, and why they may return in, in a larger quantity than they had prior. If we're going to view addiction as a disease and this impossible thing to overcome, and if we're going to subscribe to the idea that one's not enough and a thousand is too many, all these, all these quotes that, that we got in addiction recovery, um, I, I, I think for a lot of people, they're going to be screwed. Or for the other majority, I think they're going to be white knuckling it the whole time. Um, and I could never, I could never live like that, right? So, if you're looking for an, a different approach to all this, check out our pinned comment for our addiction recovery one one on one sessions. It's it's one session. It has money back guarantee. Okay, we work on mindset, we work on a plan, we work on lifestyle stuff. All right, um, it, if it's just the withdrawals and the cravings and the stress, pick up a bottle of the Kick It Crave Less chewing gum. If you don't love it, you, you reach out to me and let me know, and we'll take care of you. And otherwise, I got a ton more content right here on YouTube. We got all our free handouts in the pinned comment, and we got a bunch of videos. More than enough for you to quit right here. Until next time.